Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in for another edition of Behind the Mic in our Music Town studios here on uh, the second floor of Hockey Town, downtown Detroit. And uh, I have another great guest in today. And my guest today is another example of all the amazing talent we have here in Metro Detroit. And so welcome to... Uh, Welcome, Tom Butwin. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, hello. Thank you for coming in. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Um, and I meant to find out. I, I didn't see this. Are you originally from this area? Yeah. Okay. Yep, born okay. and raised. Yeah. Born and raised. Okay. Wanted to verify that because it was like, it, yeah. um, because you've been all over, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, um, you know, doing the different things that you do. So I was like, all right, make sure before we, you know, I right, wanted to make yeah. sure that uh, when I'm saying that you're, you're from this area, that yeah. you are from this area. Yeah. Um, so uh, welcome, and as you see, he's got a guitar, but he's a lot more than that. Uh, <laughs> and we're going to delve into uh, the life of Tom Butwin. So, um, so, and there's some things coming up that we're going to talk about that sure. as well that I really want to make sure everybody knows about. But um, uh, for, let's just say it: you're a singer, you're a songwriter, you're a guitarist, and you're an actor. And did I miss anything? No, I think that's a good order okay. to put him in too. <laughs> Okay, so actors <laughs> yeah. last. You're Probably, saying? yeah. I would say so, yeah. <laughs> okay, so, but acting is still a love of yours. And yeah, you, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a growing area of my performing uh -huh. career, yeah, for sure. Okay. Did you actually perform on Broadway? No, I've done, the closest I've gotten uh, was a off-Broadway reading uh, of a okay. new show. We can talk about that, too. But, yeah, uh, okay. But I've done, so I've done a little bit of theater in New York. Um, if I can put that on my resume. Yeah. But, you know. Close, when close to I ever thought I would be, to be honest. So why don't you think you would be? Well, I, for the, I mean, for so long I've focused on like the singer songwriter okay. kind of thing, and then over the last four or five years, it's been more toward the musical theater side mm -hmm. of things, and uh, it's led me to some places that uh, you know at the outset I was not not expecting. So but it's been good. It's did you do things. theater in high school? I did. Yeah, okay. I did a little bit in high school. Yeah, so kind so of you got a taste of it there. Yeah, <laughs> and I've 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 always been a fan, even from a young age. My parents, I was lucky enough to have parents who took a, my sister and I to see live theater, and you know, sort of started that way. Yeah, as a spectator. Well, when you get exposed to that, you know, especially you know whatever age you are, you know, especially yeah. the younger ones, it's like, ooh, this. I mean, really impresses some oh, kids. Oh, yeah, yeah, for you sure. Know, like, ooh, I want to do that, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, how many kids don't want to be able to, you know, put on makeup, you know, and costumes and act like somebody else, you know? Yeah, it's like Halloween every day. <laughs> exactly. <It's> fun, yeah. <laughs> what was the first show you ever saw? Uh, it was Phantom of the Opera oh. in Toronto. Yeah. Oh, good place, too. Yeah, the Pantages. Yeah, the Toronto one run was a good one, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did, and do you remember that sitting in the audience for that? I do. I do remember. We took the train there. Uh, I, rem we still, I still have the program. Uh, I remember, it, yeah, and I, my parents sort of, you know, I was, I had the soundtrack uh, leading up to it, so I was familiar with a lot of the music, and um, I was young, I was, oh, geez, seven years old, I okay. think, um, but old enough to appreciate it, you know, I, I was really into music at the time, and, and uh, you know, my dad and mom rented all the movies, and, <laughs> you know, at the time they were out, and sort of, like, prepped us for the story, and, you know, it was, okay. yeah, it was cool, I remember it very well. Well, you know, kudos to the parents, you know, yeah. just the way they <laughs> yeah. approached it for you. Yeah. Instead of just throwing you in there blind and going, yeah. what is this, you know? Right, yeah. So, you you know, to have a little background probably. Yeah. It was helpful. Helped on the experience. Yeah. Um, so at this point, when you're seven, you see this great musical, mm -hmm. The Phantom. Um, were you into the guitar playing and singing? No, at that point, uh, I was just taking piano lessons. Okay. So I started classical piano like so many people do um, when I was around like five, I think. Ooh, um, early age. Yeah, it was early, and I, I liked it. Uh, it was, you know, both my sister and I were interested in it. It wasn't like forced on us. It mm -hmm. was kind of like we, I think, expressed the interest and then started to pursue it thanks to, uh, again, our parents. But um, so, yeah, I was playing music, and, you know, I certainly was was very interested in it. The guitar and singing didn't come till uh, a little bit later, probably, like, early teens. Okay. So. Well, you were getting the, the, yeah, the bass the foundation, down. The exactly. foundation. Thank yeah. you, yes. Um, and uh, a lot of times... And I was, when you said you're, you weren't, it wasn't forced on you, I think is huge. You know, so many kids get forced and forced, whatever, and it's like, it just, it has to be their passion. Yeah. But obviously, you have to, the parents have to start them in it, right. you know, and whatever things, it may be. Yeah. Yes. You know, you've got to start somewhere. But, and, uh, and I found a lot of times with my kids, it, they were in dance, and it was like, they were done. And it's like, finish of the year, that's the main thing, finish the year. And if they didn't want it to go on, fine. Mm -hmm. But then they realized, both my girls realized they needed a break. And then they came back. It's like, 
they missed it, they loved it, and went back to it. So I think that that's part of it as well. Let the person decide for themselves if yeah. this is something that's part of me. So yeah, yeah. And you're you're a kid too, so it's you yeah. Know, it's, <laughs> I'm much more driven now than I was, you know, at seven. Uh, but it was always there. It was always pulling at me, you know. So what made you pick up the guitar? Want to go um, that route? It just I'm really the music I was listening to. You know, I started to to uh, listen to the Beatles and the Rolling Stones and Eric Clapton and. Um, you know, I love the piano, uh, but I was at that point, I, I was not, I never quite grew into a real pianist. I still play, um, but certainly any real piano player would, would see right through my abilities. <laughs> I can fool some people, but not, not, not the real, the real people who play piano. But, um, it was really just like, well, I can't, I can't really play this, you know, guitar solo on the piano. I could, but it doesn't quite sound the same. Mm -hmm. So, um, I started to want to get into, uh, playing the guitar okay. and I, I got one for Christmas one year and I remember I was practicing the chords like from a book even before I had a guitar so I was like I gotta hit the ground running when I get this thing so I know something <laughs> and determined uh, yeah I was I was very it was a very exciting day when I got that guitar so it, yeah. you, uh, anybody any kid that gets their first guitar remembers it yeah clear as day they, yeah, yeah. I, I put it on and I promptly tried to walk right through a door and realized that I couldn't fit through the door and smashed <laughs> right into the door jam <laughs> so very early lesson uh, learned yeah. yeah tilt it up so yes. you get through <laughs> don't walk around with it yeah oh that's funny good thing you didn't break the guitar no, your very I first thought time I did it, for, it, was, oh, it was close no. it was close I know guitars can take a beating sometimes yeah, yeah. alright um, how about we hear a song sure sure all right, so I mean, you've got how many? Four? Uh, albums? Yes, yeah, albums. Yeah, there's. It's, I always lose count. Uh, there's there's three or four original albums, and a couple uh, things that focus on musical theater okay. and covers. And okay. I'll do uh, I'll do a tune called Josephine right now, which is from my last original record that was out. It's okay. been oh my gosh, six years now. So time to get back into that world. But uh, yeah, this is Josephine. All right. Josephine, Josephine, won't you listen to me, our oh, baby? Josephine, won't you listen to me, our oh, no, no, no? Put on the shoes, baby, let's leave. Won't you listen to me? Yeah. It's quarter nine and we're just getting on the scene. Ooh, baby, it's not as early as it seems. We took our time. It's a table for two Don't look now Everybody's looking at you Josephine Won't you listen to me Oh baby Josephine won't you listen To me oh no 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 Put on the shoes Baby let's leave Won't you listen to me Yeah Listen to me, yeah, no, no, put on those shoes, baby, let's leave, oh, won't you listen to me, yeah, Josephine, won't you listen to me, oh, baby, oh, Josephine, won't you listen to me, oh, no, 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 put on those shoes. Josephine. Josephine. Uh, is there a real Josephine? I knew you were going to ask me that. Uh, <laughs> I get that question quite a bit. No, there's not. Um, okay. Yeah, the, the whole idea of the song was just like, you know, uh, like 
women are so hard on themselves and the way they look. I gotta, you know, have to dress up and I have to impress this person. You always feel that way, but like I feel like guys, you know, oftentimes are like, "You look great the way you are," you, you know. So it's sort of like that that thing, um, okay. appreciating people for uh, their natural beauty without having to worry about, you know, all the pressure they put on themselves. Uh, so that that kind of thing. Yeah. So no, no real Josephine. <laughs> But it is nice when I uh, run into somebody who is named Josephine because they're very interested in the song, and usually it results in some type of a merch sale. So okay, <laughs> <laughs> that song was written about me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no it's one not, will know the difference. Not a super common name anymore, though. So it's, it's no, it's yeah. an older. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, it's a good demographic, though. Yeah, Josie is more. Josie. Common, yeah. Yeah. It's a shortened version of it. The more <laughs> modern day Josephine, mm-hmm. Josie. Um, I got to talk about this um, challenge that you did. Uh, with the 52 songs. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, these Were these original songs? No, or? no. They okay. were co- I've done two of these types of challenges. Okay. Yeah, but the, the 52, uh, I, I lifted the idea from a couple of singer-songwriters who did it with original songs. Okay. Uh, but I did not. I did it with cover songs. Okay, yeah, you did. So yeah. w- there was another one. Okay, so yeah. let's start with the covers that you sure. did, the 52. Um, so you got inspired to do this, and you just um, cover a song. And yeah. then you post it. Yeah, cover so uh, you know rec- record it uh, in my home studio and film it. So it was you know a lot of the songs I knew already, but like you know filming it, recording it, editing it, putting it all together, and then releasing it once a week for a year. I did that. So it's it a busy, lot of songs. Is a year, yeah. <laughs> and they they covered the gamut. I'm sure with the bro- the musicals and the Broadway. The, the, yeah, that. that was a crazy year. So in in the midst of doing that, I was also recording a musical theater album. So a couple of the weeks uh, were songs from from that album. Okay. Uh, so it's kind of simultaneous. So that that. Hey, went, double dip. No big yeah, deal. Yeah, it was a. When I look <laughs> well, back can. on that, I was like, oh man, 2016 was a uh, was a was a, a busy busy music year. Did you see uh, from posting? I know. Nowadays, especially social media, if you're not on it, you know, you get lost in, mm-hmm. you know, there's because there's millions and well, billions probably. And so did you see any kind of uh, residual from doing that? Do you think uh, residual as in like more more followers, more, oh, yeah. more people coming to see your shows, buying your music? Yeah, I mean, I actually I did not um, I didn't anticipate uh, so many people. Uh, latching out. I mean, I anticipate people seeing it online and you know racking up views. You know, that's right. what you hope for on YouTube. Um, but there was, I was surprised at uh, how many people saw it and then um, got more interested in the rest of what I was doing. Perfect. Um, which was kind of like my hope. You know, mm-hmm. it was sort of like the. Um, I, it was, uh, you know, I knew I could definitely build a little bit of momentum as far as like internet engagement goes. But I was pleasantly surprised that. Some stuff um, came out of it that was, you know, actual gigs and opportunities and and things like that. So I was, Yay, I was happy. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of yeah. You know. <laughs> that's the the bottom line. Boy, if, if I can get some gigs out of this, then yeah, you, you've yeah, achieved yeah. it. You know. Yeah. I mean, with fifty two, you know, songs. I mean, the whole year. Yeah. You know, and I don't through all the hashtags and everything. You know, people can find you through mm-hmm. certain things. So yeah. so yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Um, what good gigs? I mean, you you opened yeah. up. Yeah, I mean the ba- I mean the best one uh, that came out of that, and I didn't realize it until I talked to the producer, uh, was actually right right down the road from where we are at the Fillmore, mm-hmm. not the State Theater. I almost said the State Theater, <laughs> dating myself. Uh, the Fillmore with uh, Alexander Zanjek. It was the oh, yes. Detroit performs the the live show that they do, uh, and he called me up one day and said, "Hey, would you like to do this PBS thing?" And I said, "Of course." And um, I. I didn't really know how he found me or what the deal was, but come to find out, it was actually one of the producers saw one of the YouTube videos oh, okay. and was like, oh, this is a cool project. Maybe we should get this guy. So, you know, And that was go. a big event. Yeah, it was uh, uh, thousands of people yes. and live on TV. Yeah. And, um, well, cool. It. Yeah, it was great. It just, you know, one thing leads to another thing to yeah. another thing. You yeah. just never know exactly. who's listening, who's watching. just never know. I mean, I don't Same know who's right watching now. this yeah, right exactly, now. It could exactly, be someone yeah. <laughs> going, okay, Pam yeah. and Tim, um, Tom and uh, Bowen, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You just never know. Exactly, so yeah. uh, do your best and throw out those kind of fun things yeah. like, hey, I'm going to do a song a week for yeah. a full year and uh, see what happens. You just try, yeah. I mean, I, I, I some for some reason kind of gravitate towards those creative challenges like that. Uh, it's like people ask like what, what the songwriting process is. I don't really have one, but if I had to answer that, it would be, that would be it. Like, you know, setting like, I'm going to do this 
so many times you know a week or, or whatever the case may be. Well, let's talk about that other challenge you yeah. did about songwriting. So yeah. obviously short in time. Yeah. <laughs> I can't yeah. imagine trying to write a song a week. It's well, so I did uh, I, prior to and Josephine, the song I just played was actually one of the songs that came out of this. Okay. Is I did uh, a friend of mine and I, we, we uh, a guy named Danny Rooney from a band called The Strangers. He uh, he and I did this challenge and uh, where we said, OK, we're going to hold each other accountable for 14 days straight and we're going to write a song every day and record it on our iPhone, and we'll send each other the lyrics so we can understand you know, what we're saying, and, and uh, we'll have a, you know, a record of it, and we're going to do this every day, no matter what, even if it's a terrible song, <laughs> we're going to do this. And, uh, and we did it, and so I, I, out of that came uh, an album called uh, This and Hereafter. I think 11 of the songs were from that challenge. Wow. Yeah, one of them wasn't. Um, and... Uh, and yeah, so I mean, it's again. I just for some reason I like to torture myself. I don't know. Oh, why, just, <laughs> and you took the words out of my right, right out of my mouth. I was ready, said, ready to say that that's really intensive, and you know that's that's huge. I mean, did you feel like this pressure, like, oh my gosh, I've got to have a song by the end of the day? Yeah, you would think like I I was a little bit afraid of that. You would you would think that it's it. I mean, it's certainly there were a couple of days where it was like, oh, this is going to be tough to get this done. But there is some relief to it also, where it's like I okay, I'm going to write a song today, and if it's not the best, and, you know, I have another one i got to do tomorrow. So you sort of, you, you get rid of a lot of the excuses, I feel like, mm. that songwriters give themselves to say, oh, I'm never going to finish one. I, you know, I do it to myself all the time. i got songs I've been working on for years that I just haven't finished. But, you know, it's like you put that deadline on it and force yourself and say, yeah. you can come back to this, but you have to finish this today in some form, and then you got to start something else tomorrow. Mm. It's, it's, it's pressure, but it's also, like, frees up some of that yeah. creativity too. Yeah, because you know, a lot of times as a songwriter you're probably thinking, okay, um, yeah, nothing's coming to mind. I'll try it again later. Yeah. But you yeah. force yourself. Right. You know? Or uh, or like the you know, the uh, the the like utopian view of writing I'm gonna go sit at a coffee shop with my laptop or my <laughs> notebook and you know, yeah. I'm just gonna and get inspired <laughs> and then three hours later go by you know and I'm I'm on Instagram and I'm not doing anything. Like whereas like this was Okay, I have you know I have a, a gig tonight and we got this going on and I have an hour and I got to do this in an hour. Oh wow! You know, and it's like, or else I'm not doing it. So and I'm not gonna let you know we, you know, that's it's sort of like a, a exercise challenge or something. So you got to have somebody there to hold you accountable. I say sure you, because you have it. someone else on the other yeah. side of it. Yeah, that yeah. makes a huge difference. Yeah, yeah. It's like oh uh, yeah, if it was just you, it's like yeah, I'll get yeah. to it tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. Did you find? Um, what was the shortest amount of time? You just said, like, if I have an hour or whatever. What was the shortest amount of time that you ended up getting one of those together? Um, probably, I mean, it was probably about an hour. Okay. An hour to, to come up with something and then, you know, get some type of a rudimentary recording done on it. But yeah, and I think an hour. I think an hour would be the, the, okay. the small. I mean, that's still pretty good. Yeah. I mean, but I mean, you think about it. a two week period, I mean, like, I, I, def I wouldn't, I wasn't able to dedicate like six, seven hours every day, any right. of those days. I mean, it was relatively short period of time for each each song so <laughs> that's just that's amazing and then yeah. you came up you ended up getting some good songs to put on you know yeah for, put a, on for an album. album yeah yeah, yeah. That's I mean, there was impressive. some editing and some reworking that had to be done oh you know, but, well come uh, on yeah <laughs> they're pretty close though i mean like and when i listen i have i've been meaning to do like kind of a side by side of the the voice memo versions and then the album oh. versions. Oh, okay. Uh, at some point, I just even for my own entertainment. I was maybe. gonna say what to critique it or well, just to see like where it, where it started and where it ended, mm. where it ended up, mm -hmm. you know. Part you of the know, process. Close. Yeah, how close it was at the beginning, and some of them were pretty close and didn't change much, and some were very different. So, yeah. That's the thing about this kind of a challenge. It's like, well, it's not set in stone. Mm -hmm. You know, if I want to change it after these fourteen days, right. you know, I can yeah. go back and yeah, do yeah. that. When you have a little more time and mm -hmm. all of that, so so that's cool. You, you did get come out. Are you going to do that again, or is that? Um... I've thought about it. Um, you know, as I, I circle, it, it, a lot has changed since I've done since I did my last original record six years ago. Like it, we're in a much more single-driven world where mm -hmm. it's like uh, you don't have to put out an album. You know, you, you've got big major artists who are known for putting out albums but and now they're doing a single here a single there right. a single here a single there and it's like the the delivery is is so much different now so the idea of like i got to come up with a bunch of songs for an album maybe you know it's, i'll change that approach mm -hmm. you know 
but okay. certainly, yeah, I mean, I, I might do it again. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> well, maybe those those songs that are unfinished. That yeah, people, uh, yeah. there's a couple that I've thought about <laughs> resurrecting, but I don't know. Those are <laughs> they were left off for a reason. All right, how about we hear another song, sure. Tom? Sure. All right. Uh, this is a newer a newer tune. It's not out yet. Okay. It's called Little Bird. haven't heard yet yes yeah. <laughs> so you are you trying to put a new another album together and um no? so i've got i mean that one is actually recorded and like 99 percent done um uh, so i'll probably do something with like a single release on that one okay um and might just live in that world for a little bit i've got like three or four other things sort of in, queued up um that i hope to put out um and some other covers that are are sort of in the bank too so i'm deciding how i want to do that but it's uh you know the the release thing is it's so, like i said it's so different now like you yeah. know it's just sort of less formalized and it's you just like kind of throw things out there for people and you think that's a good thing the way it it's, um it's yeah done now? I think it's a good thing you don't have to have an album i think it, it <laughs> The, the uh, excuses that musicians and songwriters give themselves, like, oh, I gotta get the, I gotta get a whole album out before I can release this, or I gotta finish recording all the 12 of these songs. You don't have that excuse anymore. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, just finish one. Pick the, I mean, because realistically, like, you know, I mean, people only latch on to, you know, one or two or three right. songs out of an album anyways. And That's true. It's uh, arguably, like, a lot of songs, good songs, get lost. Like, I go back and I rediscover songs from albums I did, and I'm like, wow, I even forgot about this, like, because I just ignored it. It wasn't a single. It wasn't something we really like playing live, so I just sort of skip over it. But, you know, now I go back and I'm starting, I have to, I have to literally relearn some of my own songs. Mm -hmm. um, but, I, you know, I think so I think it's a good thing to okay. avoid some of that. You know. When you go back and listen to your old songs, are you critical about you know how they how yeah. they were done the first time? Yeah, I mean uh, the first thing that jumps out is just my vocal performance. Like it, it wasn't bad, but I've learned a lot about my voice and how to use it uh, okay. since some of I mean some of the older things uh, I've recorded. I mean um, it's just different too. Mm -hmm. Like I sing differently now than I did then. It still sounds pretty much the same, but I, I just. 
there's some stuff where I, I know if my 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 voice teacher listened to it, it'd be, be like, ah, oh, ooh, I wasn't. <laughs> I can tell I wasn't around then. Like you know. Oh, oh, the um, teacher wasn't around. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, I mean, of course, you know, there's 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 moments where I really enjoy. I'm like, wow, like that was a really cool thing that, that happened. And there's other things like I wish, that, you know, there's songs I, I wish. I could do differently, and mm. I could. You know, I could re-record them. Nobody's stopping me. But I know a few artists that just say, once it's done, I don't go back and listen. I know several that's like, I don't listen to them. It's done. It's on an album. It's out there. And, you know, look forward and move forward. Yeah. Don't try to, oh, I should have done this or I should have done that. Yeah. Just beat yourself up. Well, you know, I so. think, you know, it's true, though. I mean, there's, and you, I think other people have done this, too, like big, big artists, uh, you know, where they go and they re-record something, and it's probably a better recording, and maybe it's a better performance, but people have fallen in love with or just uh, gotten so used to the oh, yeah. old version, yeah. you know, that it's like, it, even though you don't like certain things in it, maybe they do, and, mm-hmm. and, and you, maybe you got rid of those imperfections that really drew them to it, and now it's you know, it's more polished or it's a, you know, quote-unquote better performance, but they're going to be like, eh. Well, it's also kind of a timeline of where you've progressed, yeah, yeah, how you progressed yeah, throughout, exactly. you know. And songs change, too. I mean, like, that's why I, I, I like doing live recordings and things like that. You know, it's like sort of captures, like, where the song Josephine is today, like, mm-hmm. as opposed to when I recorded it. And, yeah. You know, it's been a lot of different places, so. And when you're live, you get the audience feedback that makes a yeah. difference. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, Big yeah. time. Yeah. And do you perform a lot live? I mean, you you get invited to these different gigs, so, I mean... This is your regular job, I'm right? Uh, there's there's another the job out there that pays. The oh, bills. okay, okay. Uh, but yeah, I mean it's it's a it's like having two full time jobs though. I mean it really. Yeah, because you I seem do. very busy. I'm very busy. I do a lot. I have my feet uh, and hands on a lot of different things. Um, so I do I I do festivals and um you know stuff like this obviously. Then there's the whole musical theater side of things that keeps me very busy and uh and I do you know your typical kind of like uh cover gig type mm-hmm. things um you know which is where i get a lot of practice and kind of test things out uh so yeah i mean it's a it's all over well as a musician you need to practice so why not practice in front of an audience yeah and get paid for and it get paid right? at the same time. <laughs> yeah no it's, Bonus. I, I, I mean i can't it, it's it's awesome it's something that you know as i've i've uh stepped into the acting world i mean you can't it no no restaurant is going to pay you or, or bar or is going to pay you to come and do the first act of Hamlet, you know, uh, there, but yeah, they, might, they might be, inter- but they will pay you, if, you know, to come and play guitar and sing. Yes. So it's a distinct advantage that musicians and singers have, you know, over uh, some other artists where it's like, you know, I'm thankful for that opportunity to go and do that, even though it's not my most favorite thing to do. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it, it can be definitely work. Um, you know, I'm still have to remind myself like, wow, I get to go and play guitar and piano and sing and, people clap and someone pays me sometimes so, which is nice <laughs> bottom line yeah uh, do you find when you're on you know in front of an audience you're performing live do you find that your acting skills come through when you're singing yeah i mean that's always been and maybe this is like me lying to myself as i <laughs> as i dove <laughs> headfirst into the musical theater but like any time on stage is time on stage mm-hmm. you know like i don't have as much uh, as many flight hours logged uh, on, you know, musical theater stages, but I I have probably more stage time than a lot of people who do that a lot, you know. Okay. So yeah. uh, it's different, but you're I mean you're playing a, you're playing a version of yourself. You're playing a character. You have you should be you know you mm-hmm. should be doing some type of a all encompassing performance uh, yeah. when you're on stage with a band or your songs. Uh, um, so yeah, I think that it definitely, it, it's made me, um, I think both have helped each other okay. out, like, you know, as acting wise, uh, my experience being in front of people and performing, it definitely helped, uh, that. And then also the things I've learned and I'm learning, you know, in that, in that realm, as I bring them back to this sort of thing, uh, I think they just improve, probably help even more that way to improve, you know, what I've done for a longer period of time. Mm. Uh, okay. performing yeah interesting are you in a, any uh, shows right now um i'm not in a show right now i'm working uh well it's sort of an extended process i'm uh, the last year and a half i've been lucky enough to be involved in a new musical uh that's being written um called oh. bonhoeffer the musical and it chronicles Wait, so what's the name of it again bonhoeffer the musical bonhoeffer so yeah okay. so you uh wikipedia dietrich bonhoeffer is a, a real guy back uh-huh, in world okay. war ii um 
theologian speaker uh and he uh, he kind of went at the nazis and hitler and um had his own little story of trying to take them out from oh. the inside so this this musical is actually written by uh, a guy here scott wilkinson um and that's the musical i, I did a, a reading uh workshop with last okay. year in new york um so it's got a broadway production company attached to it um it's uh it's got some really cool music the story is very compelling go read about it. i won't ruin the ending for you okay <laughs> um but it's on its way yeah i mean so there's uh i've been continually involved with that we've done a couple concert versions here most recently uh in detroit was at the gem theater um and we just did you know 12 songs with some vignettes and hmm. things like that from the show interesting and uh, we got some stuff coming up, and and you know there it's it's five. I've only been involved for like a year and a half, almost two years, uh, but it's been going for like six years. You know, is that so, normal? For yeah, a musical? yeah. Oh, if, wow. if for for some for for a show that's coming from a creative team that doesn't have like an established track record on Broadway, yeah. Okay. You know, if you're if you're um, Stephen Schwartz or Andrew Lloyd Webber right. or Stephen Sondheim or something like that, and yeah, I mean you, you you're going to get too fast the track the line, on that, yeah. but. <laughs> Um, but yeah, the production company and the producer uh, attached to it uh, are great. Um, they they're they're very accomplished and in, in the Broadway scene and Broadway world. And um, you know, if if it's gonna go somewhere, it's definitely got the right people attached okay. to it. And Scott's a great composer. Is there a, a dead or a time frame like when it's gonna be ready? Uh, to go? Well, I mean, I know there's there's different milestones. I mean, last year they hit the uh, stage reading, so we didn't yeah. have costumes or anything like that. But we did the whole show. Um, so if you closed your eyes, you would be hearing all the oh, dialogue okay. and the music and, and everything. But if you opened your eyes, it would just be a cast of <laughs> yeah. 25 people standing on a stage, yeah. oh, yeah. you know, singing it. <laughs> so, so it's got a ways to go still. Yeah, yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, cool. That'll be interesting. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm going to jump to my Pam exam I here. see that. Yes, I'm a little do. nervous. Don't be nervous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, random questions. Okay. Have you ever had a frightening moment on stage? Uh, yes. I have. Um, the most frightening was when I was doing Jesus Christ Superstar uh, as Jesus, and um, the the what I had to do was uh, there's a, a portion during the song Superstar, the one that everybody knows. Right, right. Jesus actually in most productions is is doing some form of of carrying the cross. Right. As Judas sings to him from the dead and sort of taunts him. Uh, sorry to ruin that if you haven't seen it yet, but. <laughs> <laughs> Where have you been? It's been yeah, out for really, like 60 exactly. years. 50 years. Sorry, 50th anniversary this year. Oh, but right. um, wow. so uh, so I had to in the theater we were we were in. I came across the front of the stage, like down in the house with this cross, and had a uh, Roman guard behind me, uh, played by my good friend Patrick. And and because of the way the theater was built, we had to actually go outside, uh, exit a stage, and then come back in another stage door. Um, to make this whole thing work. And okay. then as I was doing that, if everything happened correctly, I would end up uh, on the cross as they were f finishing the song. They would bring up this like curtain type thing and then reveal, you know, Jesus on the cross. Okay. And then you, you know where it goes from there. Right. <laughs> uh, well, one night, halfway or so into our run, we, we exit the theater. I throw this cross, I mean, this big, literally wooden cross, very heavy. And then I'm, I'm running, uh, mind you, in a loincloth. <laughs> Uh, nothing else and a crown of thorns so I mean, it's just, this is crazy you know you imagine what the people on the streets are thinking but um, <laughs> I get to the door and the door's locked oh no and it's one of those doors that has no knob or anything on the outside of it and I'm like okay I have this is a very quick like sequence that has to happen and I'm like hello like, yeah so and, and it's like I'm knocking on the door luckily the band and the orchestra is playing very loud at this point so thank god there was a, a, a stage hand there to open the door, who, much to their surprise, was like, oh, wow, you need to get moving quickly. So I had to run and take <laughs> off my sandals and then climb up this 12-foot thing and then jump up, and I barely made it. But oh, that wow. was That was probably the most scary uh, thing uh, <laughs> that's happened. You know, everything, if, you know, when I... <laughs> In the theater world, there's a lot of things that have to happen in uh, in concert with one another, like a lot of people working on it. When I make a mistake with my band or just by myself, I can easily cover yeah, it, yeah. you know, or just say, oops, sorry. But, uh, <laughs> you know, when a whole production rides on on that, it's a, <laughs> it's a different story. I was, uh, I was in Jesus Christ Superstar. Oh! Two productions. Sweet! I was a, a leper. Awesome. <laughs> Love lepers. You know, the, the crowd. Hey, Zana, oh, Zana. Yeah, you know, exactly, yeah. <laughs> just Love brought it. back some great memories. Yeah. 
Everybody's um, got a memory from that. Yes, that great, show. great yeah. musical. Favorite, Det- favorite Detroit watering hole. Ooh, uh, I'm not much for the the. Can does a coffee shop count? Sure. Okay, cool. <laughs> then that's easy. Then uh, Dessert Oasis. Uh, they have a location in Capitol Park, and I love their coffee. Oh. Best espresso in Detroit. Okay, I will check that out. Yeah, yeah. Plug for them. So yeah. if you're listening, free coffee. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Is there a song, a person, or an event that inspired you to go into the music biz? Ooh. Um, so we talked about me seeing Phantom when right. I was seven. Prior to that, uh, I I somehow uh, got to see Michael Jackson in 1989 <gasps> oh, wow. on the Bad Tour. Oh, uh, I was like yeah. four and a half years old. So I, I love, I mean, I was, you know, music videos at the time were just huge. Yes. You know, Smooth Criminal, all these long form type things and uh i was that was like what really 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 got me into it at first and then um my parents some crazy for some crazy reason decided to take me to that show <laughs> i know that is so, kind of you know, yeah but it, I, I i do rem- i remember it you know I, I i remember well i remember the lights being very hot and i remember that bob Seeger was in the audience those are the two things <laughs> i remember yeah which i i think i verified on the internet at some point well, and um, that's a good, imp- you know, to see Michael Jackson. Yeah, yeah. Impressionable. I mean, you know, I'm sure you were yeah. very, uh, gosh, I, I never got to see him, but that would have been a good show. Yeah, it was. Favorite food and beverage of choice? Uh, so we covered coffee. Coffee would be yes. my beverage of, beverage of choice, <laughs> specifically espresso lately. Okay. Um, favorite food, I mean, consistently pizza, you know, you can't go wrong with pizza. <laughs> You don't seem like the pizza guy, but I don't know why. Oh, I've wow. That. Okay. Yeah. I don't well, know. Thank you. Uh, I, yeah. Pizza. I'm hungry now. But um, <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, if you had access to a time machine, where and when would you go? Ooh. Wow. Um, I think I would go. I'll keep it in the music, music realm. I would go to, I forget the year. Whenever the concert for Bangladesh was oh. at the Royal Albert Hall, mm. that's where I would go. I think it was seventies, early seventies. I want to say. Was even maybe I don't know. Was it late sixties? I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, probably. Was probably I should know there. this. I'm a DJ. I should right, know this. It's right, right uh, around there. But yeah. I mean, there's so many people that I grew up oh listening gosh, to were yes. in the same room at the same time, and I'm yes. like, oh, um, that's a good yeah, one. That would be good to go to. Yeah. Yeah, that would. Good one. Yeah. Too bad. I'm sorry. I don't have a time machine. That's for okay. It. Yeah. Is there a quote you live your life by or think of often? Um, no, I'm not a real big quote person, uh, but, you know, I try to, you know, it's cliche, but like everything (laughs) happens for a reason, Mm -hmm. you know, that, that can help to ease the pain of certain, you know, stuff going on, you know, today that seems like a a big disaster, but in reality it's not. And, you know, it also leads you from, you know, one thing to the next. So is there anything that comes to mind that you think on now at the that yeah that's a good thing that way back when happened yeah i mean like you know different i mean specific to my music career just different things that have not worked out that i thought were would be great mm-hmm. um you know at the time it it was kind of like oh i you know and, I, and there, there are jobs and things i could have done i know i could have done them and i know i could have been successful doing them but for whatever reason i didn't get picked you know from an audition or whatever and um but then, you know, you look back and you say, wow, then I booked this other thing and I wouldn't have been able to do that had that other job come yeah, through. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, there's a lot of that, you, you know, in any performing art type thing. Mm-hmm. Like, there's a lot of rejection, a lot of, you know, you know you can do something and yeah. other people think that, uh, you know, maybe somebody else may be better for that. <laughs> so, yeah. We always have to remember there's always someone better than That's, us yeah, in absolutely. anything we do. Yes, absolutely. There's already, always someone. Oh, yeah. You know, don't want to, you know, think about that. but you know, No, it's true, though. Uh, what was the first record you ever bought and the first, well, first concert you already told us, but yep. the first record you ever bought? First record I ever bought, I think it was, uh, it was probably from one of those like mail order CD things where it's <laughs> like you get like the list and you can check them off and they'll send you. Oh, for like a penny 10. you get 10 of them? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yes. Okay. Something like that, <laughs> uh, which is very exciting. Um, but I think the fr- uh, it was either oh, was it the Sheryl Crow album, the Tuesday Night Music club is that what it is the her big first album the, the first remember. big one yes uh that has like I, all i want to do is have some fun all those tunes that one or weezer blue album one of the okay. two i think it might have been weezer might have been first though yeah <laughs> 
You can tell the, the age is. Yeah, right? Yeah, I'm giving you <laughs> clues. One Direction was my first album. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, if your life were laid out in a jigsaw puzzle, what piece would be added next? Um, probably, oh, if I watch this, this is going to be ultimate promotion segue. Uh, probably <laughs> the piece where I'm mashing together my previous performing career as a singer-songwriter and my my acting quote-unquote career we'll say uh with a, a show that i've i put together called brushes with broadway mm -hmm. and i'm doing it uh december 15th in royal oak at the baldwin theater um which is where stage crafters is uh based out of so uh that would be the next piece because that's something i hope to keep doing uh okay. you know it features musical theater songs but also Songs from Billy Joel and Aerosmith and all sorts of other, you know, things. So it's kind of got something for everybody in it. Um, okay. And we've got some really great players in the band, a six-piece band, uh, there's a couple guest singers, and um, it's really something for everybody, but, you know, it's obviously focused on Broadway-type type stuff. So that would be the uh, the next puzzle piece. Kind of Is this kind of like a cabaret-type show? or? Uh, bigger, yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of where it started. Okay. Uh, but it's, it's going to be a full-out rock show at... at at oh. a lot of points, um, you know, but it's songs from things like Phantom and Les Mis and mm -hmm. Jesus Christ Superstar, but uh, and a, a myriad other music, uh, a number of other musicals. And uh, but like I said, I also brought in some songs that I feel like could be musicals, some songs that have been in musicals, but you know, jukebox type musicals. And, okay. Um, so really, it's something. I mean, there's something for everybody there. We're, it's uh, Sunday, December fifteenth. Uh, tickets are on sale. Okay. Um, stagecrafters.org or my website tombutwin.com you can get them and, and stagecrafters has been around for a long time it's a, it's a community plus, theater yeah community yeah. theater and uh, don't let the name community theater fool you though they they have a beautiful 100 year old theater in downtown mm -hmm. royal oak it is pretty um the building itself is amazing uh the talent that they draw is amazing they've got um you know alumni who have been on broadway there's uh, alumni who are currently on Broadway, um, you know, uh, the, one of my guest vocalists, uh, Nancy Ingalls, is uh, she uh, toured professionally with Jesus Christ Superstar, and she's done. A, I mean, if you've seen a show there, you know um, the caliber of, of, of what they bring. To I the have table. seen a couple of shows. Yeah, there. yeah. you know, and yeah. they're all usually pretty good. So, what is your guilty pleasure? Uh, oh gosh, cake, probably. Yeah, if there's if you what had a cake. flavor. Um, any, <laughs> any, yeah. I mean, like a marbled cake, so I don't have to choose. Um, but I'm open to all kinds of cake, and I, once I get rolling, there's there's no really? stopping. Yeah, there's pizza I would, and I'll, cake with his coffee. Okay. Yeah, well, that's the problem is that one feeds the other. So, um, your most memorable music moment. Uh, most memorable music moment. Uh, there, I mean, there have been a, quite a few that have been awesome, but I had the opportunity, I'll combine two of them, and, and you know, since I've been a kid, I've, I've always, um, the, I mean, like, the, I'll put it out there, the one, the one role I really want to do is Phantom and Phantom of the Opera. Um, okay. So that's, that's kind of like the, you know, if I could do that, I could... I could. You'll be happy. I could be happy. You know, <laughs> yeah. for, I say that now, but if I do it, then it, it'll be something else. It's a big else role. After. Yeah, it, yeah, it'd be uh, something else after that. But um, I got the opportunity to uh, sing with and and hang out with and share the stage with uh, two guys who have played that role um, on the West End in London on Broadway at the tours. Uh, so one guy named Ramin Karamlu, who's huge in the musical theater world, mm -hmm. and uh, another guy named Frank D'Ambrosio. Um, so I I never thought I would get even that close uh you know but so if I never do it it's fine it's I got to you know sing with and, and meet these guys and and hang out with them and talk about theater and and our uh our craft uh you know so th those those will combine that into one moment and yeah it's probably the coolest okay that is cool yeah. well that's a that's quite the goal to be that play the phantom yeah and that that's lofty role. that's okay that's that's all right I mean you've got time you, you know <laughs> And you, you know, it's out there in the universe. So, yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, just put it out there. <laughs> All right. How about we hear another song? Sure, sure. Uh, this is uh, this is called "Leaving Song." Break the water, feel your feet on the bottom. 
sinking in Climb the ladder Pull yourself out Realize you're never in too deep Sunrise, sunset We haven't it being just yet Come away, come away Sing this leaving song with me Come away, come away Sing this leaving song with me Summer's here, feel the wind Off the water rushing in Hear the singing in your sleep Realize we're never in too deep Sunrise, sunset We're having it being just yet Come away, come away Sing this leaving song with me Come away, come away Know this story short but sweet It's obvious when the day's done What we did we'll always live on Oh, it's obvious when the war's won Should have spent more time on fun Come away Come away, sing this leaving song with me. Come away, come away, know this story is short but sweet. But we're with Thank us you. here on our behind the mic. Um, is that a, is that one on a, one of your albums? It is. Yeah, that was another one of the um, uh, twelve or fourteen song oh, okay. marathon oh, okay. songs. Yeah, yeah. Did you do a lot of tweaking on that one, or when you first wrote it? No, from that, that was challenge? pretty. That was pretty. Pretty much stayed the way it was. Pretty cool. Uh, oh, yeah. amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That's impressive. Yeah. <laughs> I, it just still blows my mind. It's like 14 days straight, write yeah. a song every day. Yeah. Wow. It was, uh, it was a Talk about pushing yourself. Holy. So, some heavy lifting. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, I got to clear ask you, are you sure. a, are you an Uber driver? No. Or were you an Uber? Okay, no. I don't no. think so. No. Okay. I, I'm not opposed to it, but I've never no. done okay. it. No, okay. <laughs> well, I thought I saw some tweets about Uber oh, quotes. Oh, probably. So I, then I wasn't sure. Yeah, that sure. was me quoting... Uh, <laughs> Wow. Okay. Yeah, this is a couple of years ago. Me okay. quoting a very entertaining Uber driver that my wife and I had in Chicago. So this was just one driver. Oh, we wanted just one oh. driver. Yeah. It was. It was like a okay. ten minute ride, and it was totally wild. I couldn't believe it. Well, I couldn't couldn't quite tell if you did Uber for a while, and no. you were getting from people that <laughs> you know that were you were taking somewhere. I probably should have clarified that. No, no. <laughs> Which I was, is fine. Uh, it was just like yeah, this is I was interesting. a passenger. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Although I've I've thought about. I mean, like, hey, why not drive around and get paid? I guess. <laughs> But it's some great quotes. I didn't write any of them down, but they were just go on his Twitter account, Twitter, Twitter, <laughs> Twitter account, and um, there were some great quotes there. So uh, yeah, she was entertaining. I wish I could remember her name. I did give her a five star review for most entertaining uh, <laughs> driver. Yeah. All right. Well, I, I wanted to clarify. I was like, I didn't 
quite get it if you were the driver or, That's or awesome. the passenger. That's awesome. I love okay. that. I love that question. <laughs> Are you or have you ever been an Uber driver? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, some of those quotes, that could be a song because yeah, they were was, pretty uh, I had to pretty I had to censor some of them. She was she went oh. off on some tangents that were pretty hilarious, but I was like, I don't know. I didn't put them out there and <laughs> have them come up two years later on an interview with Pam. <laughs> You never know. That's right. Um, but yeah, you know that's that's interesting though. It, as as a Uber driver or Lyft driver or something, you could probably come up with some good lines. You know, that, I can only imagine. Yeah. You know, and it kind of like um, what's his name, James Corden, that does oh, yeah. you know the yeah. karaoke in the yeah. car kind of thing. This, yeah. you know, that could be this whole kind of thing. You know, off come up the, with some great off the rails rides. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. for sure. <laughs> Was there any last things you want to talk about or mention that uh, I didn't touch yeah, on? Yeah, I mean, come if you're going to come see me ever, December 15th uh, is the time to do it because it's going to be a, a really big show, and I'm very excited about it. We've got a great band, um, uh, six-piece band. You know, a lot of the guys uh, and girls in the band you've heard in pit orchestras for touring productions at the Fisher as well as a million other places around town. They're okay. really... I'm very fortunate. They're uh, at each of their positions in the band. They're, uh, you know, in my opinion, some of the best, if not the best, okay. wow. people there. Um, we got some really uh, cool guests that'll be singing with me. Um, it's a, a benefit to Stagecrafters too, uh, which is a great, you know, organization. They bring shows mm -hmm. to the area that, um, like I saw in the Heights there, which was Lin Manuel Miranda, the Hamilton guys' uh, first show. Um, and it was phenomenal, and I never saw it on Broadway, and it's not touring, and I, that was the only time I got to see it. Oh, wow. And it was, I don't need to see it again, because mm -hmm. it was every bit, is, I'm sure, as good as, you know, some other productions of it. So, um, you know, that's the kind of thing they provide, and it's, uh, you know, affordable, really high-level entertainment in mm -hmm. a cool suburb of Detroit. So um, Sunday, December 15th, like I said, tickets available. Um, so you'll be singing most of the songs, and then you're bringing on guests yeah, to it's sing a, Yeah, okay. it's, it's, it's heavily, so if you don't like me, then don't come, but... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> now, who would not like you, Tom? I don't Come know. On. I'm sure somebody's out there. Uh, but yeah, so I'll be doing, you know, be some duets and some, uh, okay, some, fun. you know, some other people will be featured, and I'll get to go right. watch for a so bit. So go get but, tickets. Yeah, please do. Yeah. Yep. So um, December fifteenth. Yep, Sunday, December fifteenth. Tickets on my website or stagecrafters.org. Um, don't wait though. They're moving yeah. quickly. So. Yeah, it's a great it's a great um, stagecrafters. I've seen many shows there. Yeah, they yeah, do put a, a lot of good people there. They do do a good job. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's in the Baldwin. I don't. I'm sure I've been there, but that's where this is actually yep. happening. Yeah, it's okay. right in downtown. It's a little hidden gem in downtown Royal Oak, uh, okay. right around the corner from the Royal Oak Music Theater. So if you, uh, I think it's Lafayette and Fourth, but it's a beautiful old vaudeville theater mm -hmm. and. I mean, it's worth it just to just to go and see it. Yeah. You know, it's a really cool thing that's right okay. there in downtown Royal Oak. Cool. All right. So you're doing the singing, but it's your own supporting the acting. <laughs> it's, a, it's all you got over, it all yeah. mixed in there together. Yeah. So. <laughs> it's all mixed up. Yep. Well, thank you so much for oh, coming for on the show me. today. We uh, appreciate that. Yeah. And, thank um, you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, no problem. And uh, thanks, obviously, to all the people watching. So. Yes. Uh, <laughs> spread the word, are. share it out, share yes, it out there. Please do. <laughs> and go to his website again, tombutwin.com. Com. Yep. yep. And uh, find out all about him. Your music's on there. And yeah, I'm on Spotify, everything. YouTube, Google Play, the whole, but you know, anywhere, Instagram, Twitter, you name it, yeah. I'm there. Oh so. yeah, check out the Twitter. <laughs> yes, subscribe, like, comment, follow. <laughs> Whatever else That's the goal do. nowadays for everybody is like, it yeah, is. like me, follow me. Yes, it yeah. Is. It's it's like it's you don't have to buy a CD. I know you don't have a CD player. Just follow me on Instagram. <laughs> that's that's almost as good. <laughs> it's a little annoying sometimes. I mean, myself, you know, yeah. it's like, oh, I need more followers. You know, it's a full-time job. Let it me is. tell you, to manage the website, all those different avenues and, and actually perform and write. And it's, well, it's, and you're involved in so many things. Yeah, yeah it's a lot of different. It keeps it interesting, though. Nothing yeah. gets old and stale. I there you go. Well, that's keep it fresh. Yeah. Keeps you going. Keeps keeps the fire yeah, lit. So that's right. All right. Well, again, thanks, Tom. Appreciate thank that uh, having you come on and, and play for us some good stuff. Yeah, listening you. to your music. So, uh, and again, thanks to all of you out there who tuned in. We do appreciate you doing this each and every week. Or if you don't watch it live when it's happening, going back and checking it out, we appreciate that as well. So, um, again, thank you so much. I'm Pam Rossi. Have a great week. <laughs>